If you're a real, real Tupac fan, it would have been a good thing to know him when he lived in the Bay before he moved to L.A. and before all the stories that you know came out, like the, the young Pac who was, you know, just, he was, he was very much a ladies' man, very much a, a gangster-type dude, and very much a revolutionary all-in-one. He was all of that to the fullest, and, you know, I, I'm just glad I got to meet him and hang out with him, smoke with him, you know, drink some, drink some Hennessy and, uh, you know, do some videos and all that stuff, so. One love, R.I.P., homie. Finally, me and Tupac was out the pen at the same time. We hooked up down there in Beverly Hills. Went down there with Suge Knight when he had the death row going, had the whole world inside his hands. And we were just able to reminisce, collaborate, and represent the Bay Area. That's what Pac was always about, you know what I'm saying? Representing, putting the Bay Area on, you know what I'm saying? Trying to connect dots, dot I's and cross T's. And one of the most prolific individuals that I ever met in this rap game, so. I guess when we did the song, Only God Can Judge Me, that was one of the biggest moments in my life when it comes to this rap game, you know what I mean? Because it was so huge, it was so big, you know what I mean? I miss him a lot, rest in peace, Pac. The first time I met Tupac was Shock G, uh, came to this crib, I had a piano in that corner over there, and Tupac sat on the stairs right here, and sat there and didn't say a word, and it was like, what's your name? And it's like, Tupac, and you know, it's like Tupac, you know, never heard of a name like that. Quiet Cat, didn't say too much. That was the first meeting. Um, his brother, Mercedes, lived right next door to me. You know, I didn't really realize they were brothers. And the time that I really got to know Pac uh, was when he got jumped by the police, you know, over here by Lake Merritt, and they didn't like the way he responded when they called him by his name wrong. He got beat up by them. And I remember NWA was in town. Uh, we were at some place and Pac came in. He was bloodied up. Real talkative, like, man, you know, these cops is going to pay. I'm going to make them build a school. He was saying this, like, you know, hours after this happened, he was still had marks on him. Um, he was a landmark. You know, he was one of those cats that, that gave life to the West Coast, especially after he got out of jail. Um, you know, he really personified a lot of emotions and sentiments and and spoke a lot of truth you know that people were feeling especially when they felt like you know we weren't getting our fair shake in our in our in, in our fair looks um so Pac Pac was definitely a legend and his presence was felt and I often imagine like what it would be like if he had been around today what would he be speaking out on how he how he would have impacted the game because uh, he definitely impacted a whole lot of artists Pac got all his thug stuff from Northern Cali, period. He was hanging with, with, with real dudes from the streets. I mean, that's when you start seeing Pac with multiple chains on, about a thousand rings on, Rolex, because he got that from Oakland dudes, you know what I mean? Nobody in Digital on the ground was rocking like that. Oakland street dudes was rocking like that. So Pac got a lot of his street smarts, a lot of how his appearance is, everything from Oakland, straight up. Not from Marin City, not from Baltimore, from Oakland, not from L.A., body the gangbanger, but the swag came from Oakland, straight up. The gangster came from Oakland. Well, I think we learned from Pac um, as far as, uh, well, my experience, I don't know what everybody else learned, but I learned how to, you know, how to actually rap to women and still be cool about it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, because, I mean, that, that was hard for uh, gangster rappers like me to appeal to females, so, you know, Pac showed me that. Yeah, I can remember the first time when um, Tupac had got signed with Death Row. And at that time, he was saying that, you know, he wanted to get everybody on his album. So by the time we get to the studio, I'm knocked out. I'm done for the day. He come over there and wake me up, get in there and get on the mic. You know what I'm saying? And um, that was a song that we did, We Ain't Hard to Find. And that was just a moment that I remember, you know, chilling with my man's Tupac. The weekend that we shot, we shot two videos. We shot Ghetto Theme, and last night, Tupac directed both of them. And uh, I asked him, I said, man, is, is all of it worth it? You know what I mean? All the hustle, because he had got so much farther than the rest of us at that time. And I was like, is it worth it? You know, all the stress, all the hustling. And he said, man, to reach out and touch our people all around the world, it's worth it. You know what I mean? And that sticks in the back of my head is that I always got to think that no matter how tough it is, it's worth two pot. You know I mean? This <laughs> one of my favorite pot stores. We on Solano, Solano Avenue in Vallejo, California, at Studio Tone Studio. Pot come down. You know what I'm talking about? He come down. 
to do a song with us, we like to write on the floor. So we write in our lyrics and what have you. Studio Tone did the beat. We write in our lyrics and um, Pac seen us lay on the floor when we, when we write. And he seen us pull out a few boomerangs. So he pulled out two boomerangs and he was right with us. Like he was already prepared no matter what. That's just how he rolled. And I'm not trying to put extras on it, you know what I mean? And make it look like he was hella hard because he had a great heart. But you know what I mean? If he, if he got a problem with you, he got a problem with you. And that's how we are. So. I love Pac, man. R.I.P. Tupac. I was in a, a studio, and I was real heated one day. So I was making this record, and I was checking cats on this record. I was just going in on them. And Pac walked in while I was making this record, and, he, and I played it back, and he listened to it. And he said, no, Ham, no, no. I said, what? He said, man, Ham, I don't need you to do that, to really go in on them like that. And, of course, he didn't use that word, but he said, you know, uh, I need you to make records and make me feel good, man. Ha have a good time, man. Go on, erase that. Erase that, Ham. Erase that. And the funny thing is, I erased it. I, I erased it because I had a lot of respect for who Pac is and what he does. You know, because when Pac came home, you know, Daz was in there in the studio and Pac was in there and Daz hit me and said, man, Pac is home. And I'm like, yeah, right. He's like, come on up to the studio, cuz. So I'm like, okay. Bam. Went to the studio, walked in. I looked at Pac and he said, corrupt. He just yelled it. Crap. And he gave me a look that was so piercing because it, it touched my heart because he genuinely really missed us, you know. And he was like, you don't know what you did for me when, when I was in the penitentiary. He's like, New York, New York was all I listened to when I was in the penitentiary. And it helped me to get through a lot of these days and a lot of these feelings that I have right now in New York, New York was one of the things that I listened to that let me know when I do touchdown, I got to push like Snoop in the DPG and protect the coast. And when he came home, that's exactly what he did. We knew Tupac before he came to death row. He was a good friend of ours, you know. Um, we knew him when he was with Digital Underground and when he first released his first couple of records. You know, we remember we did Above the Rim together. Warren G did the record on there that Tupac is on. So we've been known him. You know, his best buddy back then was Tretch. Him and Tretch, we used to see him everywhere, you know. Um, he influenced California totally because he pushed for the West Coast um, and gave everybody inspiration that we can do this.